MediaWiki has multiple features that send out emails. One of them is that users can be emailed directly without the recipient's email address being revealed to the sender. Another is notifications. When pages that a user watches change, password resets are also sent by email. However, the core MediaWiki software needs to be told how to connect to a mail server. Thankfully, you don't have to figure that out for yourself or even have such a server to test mail handling. Instead, we can use the MailHog Docker service to capture outgoing emails and save them for later. The emails are never actually delivered, but MediaWiki doesn't need to know that. Copying again from our blog post for simplicity, we create a file docker-compose.override.yml telling Docker to use the mailhog slash mailhog image. If we run docker compose up dash D again, it'll create this new mail system. The first time you run this, it'll take some time to download the image. You can now see that on port 8025, there's a mailhog interface. Having created the mail handler, connect it to MediaWiki by adding the following to your local settings. The configuration of WGSMTP. To be clear, there are two different ports used. On port 1025, MediaWiki will send the emails to the SMTP server. And on port 8025, the HTTP server will display those emails that are intercepted. We can test this out by trying to confirm our email address. Navigating to Preferences, and choosing to set an email address. Which requires authentication. allows us to put an account email address in. I will use foobar at gmail.com. I don't actually own that email address, but MediaWiki doesn't need to know that. It would just try to send that confirmation email and MailHog will intercept it. I can then click on this confirmation link and as far as MediaWiki knows, I've confirmed my email. Setting WGSMTP as we did here is an example of configuring MediaWiki. MediaWiki comes with a whole host of configuration options and extensions can add even more. These are controlled by adding the settings to this local settings.php file. A list of the core configuration options can be found on MediaWiki.org. One option that is frequently used is changing the site's logo. As you can see here in the top left where the logo would be, the default logo includes instructions for how to change it. Set WG logos to the image URL that we want to use. I'll go find my image and move it into this MediaWiki directory. Assuming your image is also named My Custom Logo, you can then use the following to configure the logo. 
This tells MediaWiki that in the script path directory, which corresponds to the current MediaWiki directory, the logo file can be found under the name My Custom Logo. And if we go back and load another page, the new logo is visible in the top left. Setting up a local media wiki instance to test against is not as complicated as it appears at first glance. A local wiki provides a chance to figure out if the media wiki software suits your needs. And if it mostly suits your needs, but a few things are missing, then extensions can provide the extra features necessary. Currently, MediaWiki.org has roughly 1,500 extensions. And if the extension you're looking for isn't available, Wikitech can also create one for you. We hope you find this tutorial helpful.